This is really interesting. In verse 22, this is the creation of the woman, Eve. But you don't hear Eve coming into the earth saying, where's my man? <laughs> huh? Am I reading it right? It says, the man said, Eve came into the earth. Watch this. Adam was the one who was broken. Eve came into the earth whole. She had both ribs. Society wants women to believe you're broken if you're not with somebody. But God says the woman came into the earth complete, not seeking or needing anyone or anything. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you got to stand in your power. You are one of one. There's nothing wrong with you if you're not with somebody. You as a woman are complete. You're whole. Ah, and I got to say it because I'm tired of us supporting a culture that tries to make women think there's something wrong with them if they're not married. It's just not true. Wow. That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. The scriptures tell you that men should uh, leave his father and mother and should cling to his wife and they should be one flesh. You niggas are through. But I want to say shalom. Uh, first thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory. And honor that is due to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and rule well. Blessings and salutations to the whole elect. Nor is in this gospel, bro, I lift them to standard of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, wherever they may be. This is just a quick lesson through the spirit. You got this simple rule, <laughs> this this goofy, that basically is, is pumping these women. You hear these cackling baboons in the audience. Yeah! You know, typical Judite woman and typical niggas. He's condoning women to remain single and telling them oh, something is wrong with them because uh, uh, people are portraying that they shouldn't be married or whatever, man. But basically, he's going off. The scriptures does not prove what you're saying. And this is based on <laughs> an emotional response of being very opinionated. And this is why we say you stupid Christians, man. You don't know the Bible. OK, nor is the Lord dealing with you, nor is he ever dealing with you, because what you just said was completely contrary to the scriptures. Everybody that knows the Bible or have some idea about the Bible knows that men and women are supposed to be with each other, knowing that it's more beneficial for a woman to have a husband because it, it, it's, it's a completion to the boat of marriage. That's why when you go into the book of Leviticus, you have a whole chapters on marriage and a concept of marriage. But this guy is basically telling you Eve came into the earth whole, not broken. That don't even make any sense, man. And you don't even understand the whole concept of, of, of the rib You really think that the most high Took a, a, a woman from the rib of Adam Literally did invisible surgery on him And all of a sudden formed the woman out of his rib You out of your fucking mind man Okay you're completely out of your mind Because for one thing if you understand that breakdown When you put Adam in a trance And gave him that understanding You would know that he took a woman from his Particular kinsmanship Or his lineage Okay it may have been down the line may have been like a distant cousin or something of that magnitude. <laughs> but he said she came in the world. There's nothing wrong with being unmarried. So if it was nothing wrong with being unmarried, then why did the Most High give the woman to Adam in the first place? If it's nothing wrong with being unmarried, because the whole concept of him creating a woman was so she can be with a man. <laughs> you Christians are stupid, man. All right. But anyway, uh, this is the book of Isaiah 8. And I got a couple of precepts. We're not going to get all into it. Uh, the last two videos I did pretty much uh, sums up the scriptures we can use. But, we, you know, through the spirit, we'll bring out what we need to bring out. <laughs> but this is the book of Isaiah 8 and 20. It says to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it says it is because there is no light in them. OK, and there's no light in this guy because what he said is completely not biblical at all. OK, and this is what happens when you have a bunch of emotional, simped out men that want to cater to women. And you notice the nigga ain't got no beard on his face. OK, has a lining, has a bald fade. And he looks like a complete momo, man, a straight homosexual. And that's what you usually get in these Christian churches. You get a bunch of broken men that simply cater to women. And you hear all these women in the, in the audience you know what I'm saying? Basically, all the, the, the men, the women in the audience 
condoning what he's saying because it elevates them. And he's doing nothing but promoting more feminism, more hatred for men, and he's creating a, a, a di he's creating a broken dynamic between a man and a woman. Because a man and a woman, they're supposed to be together. They go together like night and day. You know what I'm saying? We as men never said we didn't need women. Now, yeah, we are surviving without the help of women because we have to. And we're men, we take on the, 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 the we take on the, the lead role, of course. You know, we're able to get our own things and do what we got to do. But having a woman at your side is nothing better than that, man, if she's in the right order. Like in the kingdom, you think we're going to have a kingdom full of men and no women? Hell no. We're going to have a lot of women in the kingdom. More women in the kingdom than possibly men. <laughs> because the women outnumber men seven to one. And they are going to be needed in the kingdom, man. Just like women are needed on this side. For what? For procreation purposes, companionship, comfort. Okay, to be subservient to you and your will. And that's the purpose they're created for. But when you don't have that, that's an off balance. That's, a, that's not balance. So condoning women to be in single... That's not a, a good spirit to be in because honestly speaking, the scriptures goes, it, it speaks of a widow woman. And a lot of times a woman that's widowed is because she's older in age. You know, she, her husband may have died and she became older and barren in age to the point she had enough respect for her husband that she didn't remarry out of respect for Yahweh Bashim and Shai and her husband. Okay. And then you had certain women that were just barren, that looked down upon that. Like Sarah, man, when she was barren, she didn't think she could conceive. And she was very uh, distraughtful for that. But the angel came to her and told her, like, look, you're going to conceive. You know? And, and, and then when she laughed and scoffed him, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She was like, the angel was like, oh, you loud. Like, you, you roughly pair, like, you, you kind of scoff. Like, what's up? And then when she conceived, she named the kid Isaac, man. You know? Uh, uh, which goes into... Uh, well, you got your Tazadok, which means uh, king of righteousness. And then you got laughter. All right. But this is the book of uh, Genesis, the second chapter. This is the book of uh, Genesis 2. And I'm going to start at verses 20. It says, And Adam gave the names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam that was not found in him, and helped me for him. And yet, how thy power? Caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. That was a trance, like a, a like a trance, like a vision almost. Not almost it was. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Okay, now this is not talking about cosmetic surgery when you go into the doctor and the most high had the, the mask on with the doctor gee with the doctor uh scrubs on. The most high had a pair of tongues in his hand, and he was going to work on Adam. Looking at the angels like, hey, pass me the scalpel, cut him up. And he made a woman out of his rib. No, it's not talking about that. Okay, this is talking about a woman of his particular kinsmanship. And it says in a rib, because you got bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, which means family. When you are connectly joined with somebody, like the joints and marrows, they're combined to make a particular structure. Okay, and the rib, which a howard like power have took it from the man, made he a woman and bought her into man. Okay, meaning that they linked up and the spirit had them to link up and he did what he did with her. And Adam said, this is now my bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she should be called woman because she was taken out of men. Therefore, should a man leave his father and his mother and should cleave unto his wife and they should be one flesh. Okay, and they were both naked and a man and his wife and were not and were not ashamed. Okay, and when it means that uh, being naked. Uh, meaning they was without sin, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, because it goes into like the understanding when they knew that they was naked. Uh, uh, basically, they was with sin, meaning in their shame and they sin. You know, but they were not ashamed of being naked because they was full of the glory of the Most High. Because Adam was the of the order of the priesthood. That's why Adam set up the foundations of the earth by naming the animals and the particular uh, 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 the, the, the fish creatures and so forth like that. Of that particular priesthood, man. Because he was following Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shai, which this Adam is actually talking about Yahweh Shai. All right? But it says, and they should be one flesh. So if the woman was not created to be married, then the Most High would not create her in the first place. He wouldn't need no need for the woman if she wasn't meant to have a purpose. And it ain't to be single. 
Now, I admit certain women are better off being single because, you know, they bring nothing but confusion. But for the most part, women, they supposed to be with a man, even if they don't believe so. So that guy's a total fucking idiot, man. He's a, a numbskull. And, and that's why the Most High is going to do a number on you Christians. Because you Christians don't know the Bible, nor is the Lord dealing with you. All right. So this is the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 11. And I'm going to start at verses uh, 8. It says, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Okay, so if the man really was created in needs of that, it wouldn't have made that statement. Talking about man was broken. Where in the scriptures that said that the Most High, that, they, that he was broken? It didn't say he was broken. Okay, but the Most High deals with balance. And he knows the desire of men, but he wasn't broken. But it was in natural context that the Most High would create a feminine woman for him. A woman. Because in the heavens, you got masculine and you got feminine spirits. Okay? You have feminine spirits. Like, look at the, the elect women on this side. They're angels, but they're feminine spirits. So you have masculine and feminine spirits. Okay? Hence, male and female. You have, male, you have masculine angels, you have feminine angels. You see? And it says, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So that shows you right there, man. The woman was created for the man, meaning that she was created for a purpose to serve and be with a man. We wasn't created for her, but she was created for us, for our benefit. So when they say, oh, well, she's a gift from God. Well, a righteous woman, the scriptures go into basically she's, a, you know, a, a, a righteous woman is a gift from the most high. Because anything that the Lord gives us in righteousness is a gift from above. Anything, even this truth is a gift from the Lord. But he also takes away gifts. But we're ultimately the ultimate prize for women. We're the prize. Because we're the sole priority uh, ship over the most high, uh, over his lordship, so to speak. Over his vineyard. Okay? It says here, neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So that's your purpose. As we read early in the first edges, the fourth chapter. Okay? Uh... second let's peep this this is the book of first timothy timothy 5 and i'm gonna start at verses 11 it says but the younger widows refuse when they begin to wax one time against the anointed they will marry okay having damnation because they have cast off their first faith which would be their husbands it says and with thou they learn to be idle Wandering about from house to house, not only idols, but tattlers, also busybodies, speaking things which they are not. Basically, a bunch of women that have no, that have nothing else better to do but to be a bunch of demon, a bunch of busybodies. Camp hoppers, man. You know what I'm saying? Women that want to be with every brother because she's not occupied with what she has in front of her. And she has to upgrade. It says, and I would therefore that the younger woman marry. The Lord just said, therefore you marry because your whole purpose of being married is so you can find you some damn business. Because you're not married and you're not dealing with anybody, then basically Satan creeps in and you're too idle. And before you know it, you all doing some wickedness. Wondering about, uh, it says, I would therefore that the younger women marry, uh, the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned at the side of Satan. Okay, so this shows you. When you're not married and when you're not engaging in the work of the Lord, basically you want some folly. All right. So that's the point. You women, man, you're meant to be with a man. You're created to be with a man. So I don't know what the hell this bozo talking about, but this guy's a complete clown, man. All right. And the Lord is not dealing with him. And Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, Shalak, Rayam, Wa, Anashim, Wa, Aragim, Wa, Abayim, Wa, Mashapayim, Al Kol, this wicked. Demonic nigga right here. May the most high bring death and destruction to him ASAP, man. The water the myup to wap a mun. To that guy, man, pushing that venom, that 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 varmint. And you hear all them cackling baboons. Yeah, that's right. But yet, <laughs> all of you are a week away from eviction. You getting served for fucking properly delinquent letters. You getting put on child support now, you getting getting ready to get locked up for 
for, for paternity fraud. But yet you taking the advice of this simp bozo here, which he probably don't even like women. He probably like men. And then you look at yourselves later down the line because nobody wants you, man. Here you are, unmarried six kids later. Last precept, 2 Corinthians 2, and I'm going to start at verses, uh, let's start at verses 1. It says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have not, as we have received mercy, we faint not, because it's merciful having this thing, man. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, okay? And that's straight dishonesty right there. And Christianity today is totally different from what it was 2,000 years ago. And it wasn't even Christianity, man. It was this truth. Being a Hebrew Israelite, okay, they referred to us as Christians in a lot of times because we were the one, we were the, it's basically another way of saying the Hebrew Israelites, which Christian goes into a Mashiachian, which means anointed ones. And who's the anointed ones? The Israelites, which were hence their Christians. Not some damn religion with fucking 300 denominations that all contradict. But having renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the Most High deceitfully. And he's not even handling them. He's not even dealing with the word. He's dealing with his own emotion, his own opinion, his own thought process. To the point he's not even dealing with the word of the Most High. Because if he was, he wouldn't be making such a profound statement like that. A dumb profound statement. But by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of your Howard. But if our gospel be hid... It is hid to them that are lost, and clearly that guy is lost. And whom the power of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Because he doesn't believe in his gospel, man. In fact, he's against the manosphere. And you damn sure better believe he's against the Israelites. And this is the reason why they set up Muppet babies like that to teach that madness. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of the anointed, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine upon them, man. Okay? So, yeah, man, the hell with what this bozo was talking about, man. The most high is going to rid the earth of niggas like this. But anyway, I'm going to end it here, giving all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And with that, Shalom and the Baba Ball and Shalak right into this demon here. Shalom.